When we talk about heat, most people think in temperature or Fahrenheit, but temperature isn't an actual measurement of heat. It's heat intensity. It's not an amount of heat and it's not a quantity of heat. Like well, gets a lot of people a little confused. So let's give you a little demonstration. Let's say that we have two containers and you gotta bear with me, pretend that this is full. I'm weak, I can't hold a full jug with one hand. I have this at 70 degrees and this was full at 70 degrees. There would be more heat energy in this, both at the same temperature. Now that may be confusing to you. Let's think about it this way. Let's say that this is in a metal container and we put it on the stove and on the same stove and another burner, same size burner, we put this cup in a metal container on the stove, which would heat to the next temperature faster. If I want to say raise it to 71 degrees, would this raise the 71 degrees first or would this raise the 71 degrees first? Putting the same amount of heat into it. Well, obviously this is going to heat up first because it's a lower quantity. So even though we got both of these at the same temperature, it's going to take more energy to raise the temperature of this because there's going to be more heat energy in this. So we got to be thinking about quantity. So temperature, when you talk about 70 degrees or 80 degrees, whatever temperature it is, that's something that has meaning to you, has meaning to me. We grew up with a temperature. It has some relevance. So that's why we use temperature a lot, but it doesn't tell us a quantity. Now, let's look at another thing. Let's talk about a thermometer. So if we have a thermometer in it, the old thermometers, we had mercury. And mercury, we talk about mercury rising. Well, really what it has to do is also energy. As the heat energy or the intensity adds to this thermometer, the temperature goes up, the molecules in this liquid start to move faster. And when they start moving faster, they start spreading apart. And as they spread apart, it expands. In short, you put heat on most things, they expand. We add heat to mercury, the mercury expands out of the bulb and pushes up higher on the thermometer. In this case, right now, it's a little above 60 degrees Fahrenheit on this thermometer. Now, now that we understand that concept, let's apply this a little bit more and go a little more in depth. We're going to have our thermometer right here. And let's say that we're at the very lowest point. Ludacris always asked, how low can you go? Absolute zero. That's how low you can go. Absolute zero on any one of our scales right here. Absolute zero is zero degrees Rankin minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 273 degrees Celsius, and zero degrees Kelvin. That's all the exact same numbers. Those numbers, they have a different number, but it's all the same points. That's the same thing. We talked before about energy and atoms and molecules and everything's in motion all the time. Well, at absolute zero, everything stops. It looks like this board's solid, but it's really moving right now. There's energy in it. What's cool is most gases will actually turn to a solid at this point. There's no energy at all. Absolute zero. And it's only been found in one place on earth and that's my ex-wife's heart. Above that, everything else is heat. So what we're going to do is add heat energy and see what happens. The next point I put on here, if we add heat energy and the mercury starts to rise is actually negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as negative 40 degrees Celsius. It's the only point that I know of that Fahrenheit and Celsius are the exact same number. So it's kind of cool. A little trivia question somebody may ask you. Um, but that number also means 419 degrees Rankin, also 233 degrees Kelvin. Same exact number. So let's add a little bit more heat energy. Let's raise it up to zero degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of people can imagine the weather in some places unfortunately gets to zero degrees Fahrenheit but there's still 460 degrees of heat available. The Rankine scale is an absolute scale, similar to Fahrenheit, and it's 460 degrees Rankine is the same thing at zero degrees Fahrenheit. It also means negative 217.7 degrees Celsius and 255 degrees Kelvin. But if we add even more heat energy and the mercury rise a little bit higher, we get to 32. Now this is a more important number. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is when water starts to freeze, change state from a liquid to a solid or from a solid to a liquid, depending if you're adding heat or taking heat away. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is also zero degrees Celsius. So if you're in the other part of the world, everybody knows that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. In America, they always know that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the exact same number. Now we can convert that to Rankine, which I don't know that anybody uses Rankine anymore, honestly, but Rankine would be 491 degrees Rankine and Kelvin, which is the scientific absolute scale, is 273 degrees Kelvin. 
If we continue to add heat, the next number I've put on the list is our body heat temperature. In Fahrenheit, it's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and in Celsius, it's 37 degrees Celsius. I've kind of rounded some numbers, but 37 degrees Celsius is our body temperature. Now, this is important because anything warmer than my body temperature, heat is going to be coming into my body, so I'm going to feel significantly warm. Anything lower than my body temperature, heat can actually leave my body, so I'll start to be cooling off. Now, there's some differences in that. It depends what you eat. Your body's always creating more heat energy, and it also depends on how fast you can transfer heat. We're going to talk about more about that later. But now, let's continue to raise our heat energy level up, our intensity level up, and we get to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Water's going to start boiling at 212. It's going to start changing state at 212. We're going to talk about that number later, so keep in mind 32 Fahrenheit and 212 Fahrenheit is the same 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. They're very important numbers. At 100 degrees Celsius and 200 degrees Fahrenheit, water's boiling. It's a very important number. We're going to come back to that later. Now, if we wanted to put that in Rankin, that's 672 degrees Rankin, and that same exact boiling temperature is 373 degrees Kelvin. Now, I've put one more number on here. I've put over here the typical oven temperature, 350 degrees Fahrenheit and 177 degrees Celsius. That would be 809 degrees Rankin and 450 degrees Kelvin. Now, this number can go on and on and on and up. We can get the number of the temperature that water um, will actually steam will turn into a different substance we get the temperature of stars there's all kinds of numbers that go up and up and up through the scale i'm just wanting you to realize that all these different numbers are the same point for example in the u.s you talk to somebody about fahrenheit they have a good idea what you're talking about you talk to somebody in australia and they're, they're thinking in celsius they're completely lost so i have a lot of friends all over the world and when i'm talking temperature i have to convert their temperature to what i'm used to nobody's really wrong it's just what you're familiar with in my life, I've never had to sit down and actually do the math for it. Nowadays, we just use an app or a conversion chart, uh, and now you can just ask Google, you can ask Siri, and it will do that conversion for you. If you're in school, they're going to have a formula for you to learn to be able to convert between all these different numbers. You can sit down and practice those formulas. If you really, really want, we can do a video on that, but it's just really not necessary. I've never had to sit down and do the math other than a test for class or a certification. But that's temperature. Now remember, I want you to think, Temperature is heat intensity, not a quantity. It's not an amount. 